फ्रेंड वेलकम टू माय चैनल एग्रीकल्चर विद समीर वंस अगेन सो इन दिस वीडियो ऑफ माय विल बी रिलेटिंग और रीडिंग अबाउट द बेसिक प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ अ फील्ड एक्सपेरिमेंट सो इन एग्रीकल्चर वी कंडक्ट डिफरेंट फील्ड एक्सपेरिमेंट्स और रिसर्च वर्क्स ऑन डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स और डिफरेंट क्रॉप्स और ऑन डिफरेंट वेराइटीज और डिफरेंट ट्रीटमेंट सो कॉल्ड सो इन दैट we have to know that what is that particular thing or particular basic thing to conduct a field experiment so there are certain principles that are to be followed while conducting a field experiment so here we are going to read about the basic principles the basic principles of field experiment so our topic is on field experiment so what is a field experiment and what is the objective behind conducting a field experiment so this is the most important thing thing that we must understand that uh, what is the objective behind conducting any field experiment so when we conduct a field experiment suppose we take different treatments those treatments uh, we take different treatments and these treatments can be of uh, uh, different doses of nitrogen can be of different doses of uh, fertilizers like nitrogen or phosphorus or can be of different uh, spacings okay or can be related to uh, different uh, varieties of seeds okay so based on the uh, particular choice of a researcher these treatments may vary and the number of treatments can also vary from 1 to infinite the number of treatments can also vary from uh, from a to a certain uh, limited numbers as per the availability of different uh, management resources management uh, things we can plan our particular treatments so this basic principles or before conducting a field experiment we have to go through certain basic principles so before going that the main objective of conducting any field experiment is to estimate the objective of any field experiment objectives are to estimate the experimental to ex estimate the experimental error okay and to valid to estimate the valid to estimate or valid or uh, valid estimate you can say to valid estimate the experimental uh, experimental error and and to control or to reduce to reduce or decrease or decrease the experimental the experimental error so before knowing that uh, what these objectives we have to know that what is an experimental error so experimental error okay experimental error so experimental error uh, is like suppose we are going for different treatments okay so suppose if we have a field okay suppose this field area is 100 meters square okay so we are getting suppose there are two fields suppose there are two fields a field a and field b so in this is both of same uh, area if both of the fields have same area and if same management practices same similar management practices are been done then if we are getting like from field a if we are getting around 50 quintals of yield and from field b if we are getting around 70 quintals of yield so this may be this experimental error may be due to treatment defects or due to certain natural variations in the field so the reason behind this difference in the yield or difference in the yield is may be due to two reasons so what we consider is the effect of treatments that we have taken for the particular experiment and this also may be due to the natural variations so natural variations in the field 
So it cannot be uh, concluded that these treatment effects only uh, make the give different yields, but there may be some natural variations which may be controlled or which may be beyond our control. And to estimate these and these variations create the experimental error. So these variations can be variations. So these variations can be due to uh, the soil fertility levels or due to the fertilizer gradients, fertilizer gradients in the field and it may also be due to the soil moisture capacity or soil moisture holding capacity. Okay. So there are different factors in the soil or the natural factors in the soil that can be uh, a factor, this can be a particular factor that causes variations and these variations causes the experimental error. So we can term this as like variations, variations are a result of our uh, treatments, effects plus the experimental error. So these variations can be due to the treatment effects or due to experimental error. So that's why what we see is a difference in the yield. Suppose there are two fields as we discussed before. It gets 50 quintal yield and it gets uh, 60 quintal yield suppose. So this difference between the yield may be due to the treatment effect or may be due to experimental error. So this is what we define as the variations. So these variations causes your experimental error. And to validate or to find this experimental error, there are certain principles. Okay. So the these principles, the objectives that we studied, like to estimate, to valid estimate, and to reduce the experimental error. So these objectives can be can be clarified or can be uh, fulfilled. These objectives can be fulfilled by following the principles. So there are certainly three principles that is being followed. One is replications replication one is randomization and the third one is local control so we can detail about uh, we will be detailing about each and every principle and what is the use of this principle what why should we follow all these principles to conduct a field experiment and how these principles can help in resolving the objectives or fulfilling the objectives that we have mentioned before like how can we estimate valid estimate and reduce the experimental error so these principles helps us in estimating like suppose the first one like replication okay so replication how this replication helps us in uh, estimating okay so replication replication helps us in estimating estimating the experimental error we should remember this like it helps us in ex estimating it doesn't solve it doesn't solve the experimental error it doesn't tell us about the percentage of experimental error but it helps in estimating the experimental error replication means replication means repetition 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 of treatments so why we repeat treatments so with repetition of treatments, we get uh, to understand the difference in the yields or the results, the variations that are produced. That helps us in knowing that there is certain experimental error in the particular field or particular plot. Suppose uh, there is a variety, variety uh, B. So if we are cultivating it in different uh, four plots, okay? Same variety, if you are going for a same variety, if the variety is same, management practices also are same, same management practices, same varieties and when we go for the yield, so we are getting, these are four plots, suppose plot 1, plot 2, plot 3 and plot 4. So within these four plots, we are getting different yields, so the yields is like 10 quintal, 12 quintal, 14 quintal and 8 quintal. So the difference between the plot 1 and plot 2 is around 2 quintal and between this it is 2 quintals, it is between this it is 2 quintals and between these two plots it is 4 quintals and between okay so and this between these two plots it is also 4 quintals. So the this difference this difference between the yield 
helps us or it helps us in knowing that there is a particular experimental error beyond the treatment effect so treatment of course puts a uh, particular effect on the particular uh, uh, different uh, things that we plan for our research but this the estimates this replication estimates that there is a particular experimental error natural experimental error or natural due to natural variations this experimental error occurs so replication is repetition of treatments and helps us in estimating the experimental error so now coming to the second one that is replication is completed next is randomization randomization okay so randomization the word itself signifies like allocating randomly so to reduce the biasness to reduce to reduce the biasness so there should not be biasness in treatment suppose we are having four treatments suppose we are having four treatments okay t1 t2 t3 t4 we are plan uh, we are just giving treatments suppose there is a plot suppose there are four plots and we are allocating four our uh, treatments in a very similar way or a very straight way so if the soil if this suppose this is a plot of suppose this is a plot okay this is a four plots okay plot four okay plot one plot two plot three and plot four so if there is a uh, increase in if there is an increase in the fertilizer fertilizer gradient okay so if here it is high and here it is medium and here it is low so when this happens so when this happens so if we are allocating the four treatments then there is a biasness like this uh, uh, suppose we have uh, four more four more plot four more plots okay suppose we have four more plots okay suppose we have four more plots so here what happens is suppose suppose we think that here the fertilizer gradient or the fertilizer content here it is high and here it is low okay so if we are allocating treatments then uh, with a biasness like t1 should be here t2 should be here t3 and t4 should be in a serial manner so what happens is t1 and t2 t1 and t2 may give higher yield higher yield higher yields whereas the treatment where the fertilizer gradient is low then t3 and t4 or t4 mostly can give you low yields uh, no matter whatever the treatment it is being provided this may give the uh, decreased yield or decreased uh, output so to reduce this biasness biasness what we do is we just randomize it so randomization can be done by following the randomized statistically standardized randomization table random table and so what we can do is we have to allocate the treatment in such a way that there should not be any biasness in among the treatments so each and every treatment should get so suppose if there is a variation if there is a variation the variation is here fertilizer is higher and here fertilizer is low okay so this is a particular variation like here it is high this place is low so if we are allocating in this way so if you are allocating in this way so there is a chance there is a chance like t1 comes in the higher variation t1 also comes in the lower variation so each and every treatment is allocated each and every treatment is allocated to each and every variations each and every treatments are allocated or gets receives uh, all variations okay so each and every treatment gets into all variations so this qualifies or this valid makes the valid estimates it validates it validates that estimation of experimental error so with randomization we can valid estimate we can valid estimate the experimental error
So validly we can say like if there are experimental error is generally a valid thing or not like if it is correct or not. So with replication we can know that there is certain experimental error in the field due to the different outputs that we receive. Endomycin it validates that this experimental error <coughs> is uh, occurring due to certain fa natural factors or natural variations. So now coming to the third one and that is the local control. So these two objectives uh, like estimation of uh, the experimental error and valid estimating the experimental error is being fulfilled by both replication and randomization. And but the use of local control is very important. Local control is very important because it provides homogeneity. Suppose we have replications so one replication 2 and replication 3 suppose we have replication 1 replication 2 and replication 3 so suppose we are also having like soil fertility suppose the soil fertility okay, soil fertility is high here and is low here and in this terms if you see the soil fertility soil fertility sorry, soil fertility it is high here and this low here. So if there is certain uh, uh, variations like the soil fertility is high in this the top position and it is low in the um, position or uh, coming to replication 3 it is low and if it is high at the static position and low. So this replication local control what we do is between these replication or we call it as the blocks between these replications we have to we have to uh, randomize the treatments in such a way that the homogeneity, the homogeneity is maintained. So here T1, T2, T4, T3, T4, T1, T2. So if we are allocating in such a way, okay. If we are allocating the four treatments in such a way that uh, we are maintaining an homogeneity, so there may be a difference between R1 and R2, there is a variation, there is a variation between block 1 and block 2. So this variation between the blocks exists, but when we see from in a in, in a particular replication, the treatments doesn't follow any such uh, heterogeneity. Or there is no heterogeneity between treatments in a replication but there is a heterogeneity between uh, treatments in a uh, in between two two in between two replications there is heterogeneity but in between a uh, replication there is homogeneity because each and every treatment are being allotted by randomization procedure and this decreases this decreases to us we cannot say that it completely reduces the experimental error but this uh, local control helps in decreasing or reducing the experimental error to a certain amount. So this can provide us with some estimated or expected yield that we desire from a particular treatment or particular field experiment. So all these three principles helps us in understanding that a field experiment should be following all uh, to, to fulfill all the objectives of a field experiment. We should follow all these principles of replication, replications, randomization and local control. So while conducting an field experiment, we must keep on uh, our objectives of, uh, objectives should be fulfilled along with following all these standard principles so that we get a particular or we get a successful output or successful experimental output from our particular field experiment. So this is all about the class and keep liking, sharing and subscribing my video. Thank you for watching it.